Welcome today to Covenant Realities. I'm Robert Kitzmiller. I'm glad to be here. Uh, let's invite God into the, our uh, midst. Father God, we humble ourselves before you. And we invite you into our midst to have your way and speak to us today, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, have your way. Let's, uh, let's turn to uh, Mark, the fifth chapter, and let's look at a story here, a uh, true story of Jesus. Uh, let's go to Mark 5, verse 35. And while he, Jesus, yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any farther? Further, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Tabitha kuma, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. So here uh, we see that uh, Jesus was told, and the disciples said, Hey, don't bother uh, any longer, don't bother the master any further. Uh, the daughter's already dead. But as soon as Jesus heard it, he said, Be not afraid, only believe. Now, what do we see that happens here in verse 39? What did Jesus say? Because he comes in and her people are weeping and, and wailing. And he said, Why do you make this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Now, that just went all over them. They laughed him to scorn. But we find that he put them all out. And it's necessary to put out unbelief out of our ears and away from our eyes and just away from us completely. And Jesus said, be careful what measure that you, that you meet. It shall be measured to you again. And also that's, that's dishing out. But also be careful what you, you bring in as well. So, guard the gates, uh, the gates uh, of your heart and your mind. So, here, he said, the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Now, I want to present you with the question. Did Jesus tell the truth? And was the, the, the girl, was she... Dead, or was she sleeping? And I'll, I'll tell you the reason why we want to ask that question. Why is it important? Well, I've spent hours and hours and hours with people talking about this, and most always they're concerned about what I believe. Very concerned. And uh, if, if you use the word argument, uh, I think we've all, we've gotten beyond the, the getting mad or anything like that. So it really wasn't an argument, but it would be a, a uh, and not really heated either, but it's a very uh, brisk uh, communication. And I have ended up uh, uh, apologizing for uh, 
certain mannerisms and all. So, and then they apologize to me too. So when it comes down to it, they go like, I think we're, we're really talking about the same thing. Well, here's something that I want to give you that God has given me. It's not nothing to do with me. It's only I'm passing it on from God's handed it to me and I'm handing it to you. And, and I believe it's a valuable thing. I mean, it's more valuable than if I gave you a thousand dollar bill. They still make them. But uh, I, I truly, truly believe that what I'm ready to give you is very valuable. And I love giving you valuable things. I truly do. My heart just rejoices in that. So here it is. The, the devil's gospel message. The devil's got a message to, to speak or to preach, whatever. He's got a message. And that message of his... I believe, now here we get away from the scripture, I hate to say get away from the scripture, but when, I, when I'm not positive on something, I'm going to tell you this is what I believe. So write this down. This is what I believe. I believe, and then we'll get back to the scripture here in a second, but I believe that the, that the devil's message could be the exact, very exact gospel message the very exact truth, as long as you misunderstand it. I think he'll, he'll go ahead and he'll take that. And he would even use it for a, for a message. As long as he knows that you're going to misunderstand it. And then, and of course, uh, there, then, you know, he deviates from that. And, and has messages that are so close. He, his message is so close to the gospel message that it takes special discernment. It takes revelation for you to know whether it's the devil's message or it's the truth of the gospel. But if you're born again, you have the Holy Ghost inside of you and you need for no man to teach you. But the anointing and the unction of the Holy Spirit is in you. But I'm just saying that it is so close that we could be arguing for hours and then we say like, oh, well, what a relief. You know, we're still talking about the same thing, sleep or death. You see, but... But the thing of it is, we must realize, and that's why if we are just hone in on this thing, we'll just camp out again, as I said before. Let's just camp out here and make sure that we get this right. And all of you that listen in, let it be established in your heart so that you can build from it. That his message is so close that there's no really, we shouldn't really be relieved when we say, oh, we're still, I mean, it's nice to, to realize that we're talking about the same thing, but let also realize that we've wasted time going over something that we finally find out that we're talking about the same thing. Why in the heck, if we're talking about the same thing, are we wasting hours upon hours and, and making apologies and getting emotional? You know, and to me, I'm more of a kind of a person, I'm a more of a submitting type person maybe than somebody else. But people are different. But still, no matter what nature you are, you still have to be a submitting person. It may be to what degree, you know. Uh, but, but really, submission 1,000% to God is, is the degree that we've got to be. But, but uh, I, I, you know, in other things as well, I'm, I'm talking about submitting to Hey, when God says, if they're using the word sleep, and I meant to look up how many times the word sleep, sleepeth, uh, is in the whole Bible. It is just unbelievable. I'm sure it's page after page in the, in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And I've also got ESORD uh, on the computer, a great uh, so software package there. But... Um, sleepeth you know they they slept with their fathers you know there's a reason and and how how come we're so smart that that we'll we'll spin off of the word sleep and we're so smart that we're going to say no i'm smart uh you know i'm smarter than that i i understand more than that i i'll tell you what sleep means it means death 
you say, well, let's, why don't we just stay with, with what the di disciples are saying and what Jesus is saying? Why don't we just stay there and then learn from there? And so that's what I trust that we will. Together. Let's do it together. But, but this, this statement that Jesus made, he forces you and me just, just pretend like you're right there in that room. And, and, and in, humanly, in the human uh, vernacular, she's deader than a doornail. But he says that she sleeps and she's not dead. So if, he, if God, Jesus says that, then God says that, then I say it. Even though if my mind doesn't follow and my understanding doesn't follow, I'm still going to say it. I'm still going to say she's asleep. But God's given me an understanding in that regard, and I thank Him, and He excites me that He has. And I trust that He has with you too. So Jesus is not lying. The, damsel, the, the, the daughter, the girl is not dead, but she's sleeping. And so when we realize that, and here's where God really opened the revelation to me is when, 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 I was, when I saw Adam and Eve in the garden and Eve was presented, the devil in his sly manner, he came to her and was, was accusing God and her and questioning her and then she had to rely on her, her mind to, and her senses to see whether what God had said was, was right or not. And it, he showed me that when Adam and Eve ate, God says, the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And, and dear Lord, I, I should have had scriptures ready. Why did I not have them? Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Now, put that scripture along with, with today's lesson. Let the dead bury the dead. You know, and he said, you're, you're whited sepulchers. Sepulchers, how do you say that? The, the Pharisees, the scribes, he said, they're, they're, they're cemented tombs. They're deader than... Then four o'clock. And here they're walking around. And, and, but how God showed to me is when Adam and Eve ate the fruit and God said, that day you're going to die. And I tell you, assuredly, God tells us he died. And Adam and Eve died. But they were born again of the devil. You see? They obeyed the devil they obeyed the voice of the devil. They obeyed the voice of the physical senses that said the tree's good to eat, the tree's nice looking, and it'll make, it looks like it'll make you wise. Listen to those voices in the physical realm. And, and so they died that day. And they're still walking around. And I could, God just let me picture, if you could just see Adam and Eve after they ate the fruit, and they're walking around and your mind's are turning. Your mind's turning and you see it. I said, okay, I see Adam and Eve walking. I heard what God said. You're, the day you eat, you'll surely die. They're still walking. They're still moving. They're still, I don't, something, something's up here. There's something fishy about this. Something's funny here. Well, there's nothing funny about it. You see, when you rely on your physical senses, you're going to get wrong information. You know, I told you before, you know, that the, the railroad tracks, they run together, you know. I, I saw them. And, and uh, many different things, you know. You see, the, see two guys, the muscles in their arm, and you said, well, the, the guy with the bigger muscles, he's stronger than the other one. Wrong, you know, that's not always the case. You can't go by the physical senses. The world's flat, you know. Show me how it's round, you know. Of course, we have technology now that shows us. But if you go by your physical senses, you're going to get wrong information. And so Adam and Eve died when they ate the fruit. And dying means, of course, that they're, they, are, they are dead to this, the realm that they were in. I'm going to put it up here above the... Up here, the, the realm they were in, they died to that, and they passed over the, the Jordan or whatever. They passed into the realm of the devil, into the fleshly realm, the sinful realm, 
And then they were alive to the flesh. They were alive to the devil, you see. People who are alive to the flesh, he said to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. So, so we are dead in Christ Jesus. Let, let's go to the next verse. Uh, scripture be 2 Corinthians 5, 14. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. See, Jesus died for all, so all were dead. It means, you know, you have to define the word for. Jesus died for all, in place of all. He died representing all. So if, if all were inside, another way to put it is all were inside of Jesus. When he died, everybody died. Okay, verse 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him, unto, unto him which died for them and rose again. See, we know like Adam, in, all, in, in Adam, all, all have been made sinful. You know, in Christ shall many be made righteous. All are made righteous, but only those who, who will. You understand the difference there? All have been made righteous through Jesus Christ, but unless you receive it, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to uh, experience it. You have to receive it. So not everyone will receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The message, verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now from now on know we him no more. You see, so here's a, here's a command from God that we're, we're not supposed to know people after the flesh. But man, I mean, it's just rampant. I mean, people, they'll take offense, you know, they, they stand up for the flesh. Uh, and of course, that's what God's waiting for. He's waiting for the words of your mouth to say who you are and what you are. You know, I, I'd shared with uh, about a couple musicians that would sing Voodoo Child. Uh, did Hendrix write that? Probably. Uh, we know where it came from. But I had heard, instead of mentioning names, I could, well, you know, I mean, I had heard that Stevie Ray Vaughan was, was, had got saved before he, uh, he, went, he, he left the world. Uh, his bass player told about it. And, uh, but I could imagine, and I don't know what happened. I'm not saying I know anything of what happened, but, but let's just imagine a, a born-again Christian that would sing the term voodoo child, that they're a voodoo child. Well, people do that in smaller, in smaller, uh, uh, category, smaller, what's the word for category? Smaller, uh, uh, not as great a dimension as singing to the world that you're a voodoo child, but people still talk about, you know, they're only human and they're only this and that. And it, I, it, it surely disappoints God that his people would speak down about them, about his work. You know, we have to know what God's work is and what our work is. Well, here we we were commanded, we're commanded in verse six, 16 to not to know any man after the flesh. So that's something that we've, that's a work for us to do. And God, and it's just like the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13, you know, God wants us to be like him. So and, and so he's not going to tell us something that's not going to be like him. That's like him to not look to people after the flesh. If God judges you after, if God looks at you as only through the flesh and what you can do, heaven help the, everybody. God doesn't do that. He doesn't look at you for what you look like to be, that you look like you are and what everybody's told you that you are, and what all the records, uh, things that you've done, uh, or, or how you failed, or whatever. He doesn't look at that. And, and Moses, uh, when he called Moses, my goodness, did God get mad at Moses. Here Moses is stammer, and uh, he, in the, in the natural realm, uh, everybody would say, God, you don't realize you should not pick Moses as a spokesman because you picked the wrong 
person for your team here, man. I mean, he can't, nobody can even understand what he's saying. But when God, God does not look to the, to the arm of the flesh. And he's telling us that we're not to either. Why should we be different than him? He's our father. If you're born again, he's given you his last name. And uh, why shouldn't we be like him? We better be like him. And how do we be like him? But we submit ourselves and let him make us. And that's how we're, we're dead in Christ Jesus. Look, he says all have died. Let's look at one other scripture, Colossians 3, uh, 3, 2 and 3. It says, set your affection on things above, not things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Another place it says, it's not I, Paul says, it's not I that live, but Christ that dwells in me. Yeah, we have movement, we have life, but it's eternal life. And I brought, hold on, I brought some gloves today. We've shared with you gloves before. I really like gloves. I, I really love gloves. I actually, gloves, uh, I was raised on, on gloves. And uh, I love to keep them clean and, and, and nice. I hate any little specks of dirt which you see on these and the I guess the steering wheel and all with these driving gloves uh, is not perfectly clean or if you touch anything else these white gloves I like I love white gloves I like different kinds of gloves but uh, they're, they're great well you see how the gloves are are alive uh, and then you see how the gloves are not alive well, now they're dead. They were alive a minute ago, right? But you see, that's this, the physical body. Wait, let's say this glove was never alive. It, it never was alive when they made it. Now, actually, it was never alive when they made it. And it, is it even alive now? It's not alive now. It wasn't alive when he made it. It never will be alive. And this body, this physical body, will never be alive. Never. It never was, and it never will. It's an earth suit. There's a, as long as the spirit is inside of it, and spirit moves it, it moves. Uh, I've heard where pre people were preaching and they, they left their body, you know, they went to preach somewhere else, but their body just stood there and froze. Well, you see, when the spirit goes out of the body, it, uh, it doesn't move. They said, now it's dead. Well, he looks like he's dead. You know, dead. So they're using the term, back to the fine line uh, of the devil's message. He's in the details. And if he can get you to say the right words, and if he can twist the meaning of your words to where he can gain authority in your life, he would just love that. When they say, I, they, have a, they have a cold and they have sickness and they have this and they have that. Well, it's, you don't deny the existence of it, but it's all in the definition of the word have. And if you define it the correct way and you have something that's not God's, you know what that, the correct way of saying that is? That's, that's stealing. That is, you've got some, what is it when you have something that doesn't belong to you? You know, and that's the problem with today's, that's what's happening in today's world. When the devil gets a chance, he'll change the definitions. He'll change the words, he'll change the definition. Be, you know, it, but it all gets down, it all comes into a point. It all gets down to authority. He hates that, that, that God is, has lifted man in the spiritual realm and made, brought man back to himself and, and brought the devil down. So he hates it that man has authority, has power of choice, so he calls that discrimination and racism and all those things. But it all gets down to that fact of he wants to have dominion on you, but still if he gets your dominion away from you, he, he just wants to destroy you and what you have, and then he, he doesn't have what you in, 
he just destroys everything. So if he gets something away from you, it's going to get tore up and destroyed anyway. So he's just a destructive uh, uh, being, that's all. So, but the, the body was never alive, so we have to be clear. We have to know what we're talking about and why Jesus said that she's asleep and how we're dead in Christ Jesus. You know, we're, we're dead, as Romans 6 says. I mean, you know, when, when you die, the world has no more power over you. If you die, the devil can't tempt you. Uh, they can try to put sickness on you, and you can't put sickness on a dead man. But the Bible tells us that we died to the world. So we didn't die to the spiritual world. We died to the fleshly world. And when people want to bring the fleshly world into God's kingdom, it, he won't allow it in there. Because the devil speaks through the fleshly world objects let's go to numbers 13 again i don't know if we're going to have time this time or not let's but it, but but we see here that and the lord spake unto moses thir, numbers 13 1 and 2 send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which i have given to the children of israel of every tribe of the fathers shall you send a man every one uh, a ruler among them and in verse uh the next verse is uh, and and see the land, what it is, verse 18. And the people that dwell in it, therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they may dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and the cities that they dwell, the cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. Let's jump down in, uh, to verse 26. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron, and all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And, and they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sentest, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The uh, uh, Amalekites uh, dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and the coast of Jordan. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, because they're stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it's a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, Anak, and which come of the giants, and we were in their own sight as grasshoppers, so we were in we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Once you see yourself as something, then the devil can see you the other way too. Let's jump all the way over to verse 36. And the men which Moses, the men which Moses uh, sent to search out the land and returned and made all the congregation to murmur against them by bringing up a slander upon the land. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land, what happened? They died by the plague before the Lord. You see, an evil report. And he said, all I was doing was telling the truth. All I was doing is saying, you know, that, that the little girl was dead. Everybody can see she's dead. Well, you're going to uh, say, Jesus said she's, she's sleeping and you say she's dead. Laughing him to scorn. Are you going to laugh Jesus to scorn? Are you going to be one of the ten spies that die by the plague? No, I trust that you aren't. Are you going to say these gloves are alive? No, they're just, a, uh, they're just a, a, an expression uh, of another way of expression in my hand. If it was dark out and uh, these were glowing in the dark, then you'd, you'd see these gloves. Our bodies are not alive, but uh, we want to keep them not like, like the gloves. We want to keep them nice and clean and, and take care of them, but they, we don't listen to their voice if they tell us something that's, that's contrary to God's Word, right? Right. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I pray that people understand what's being said and that we choose not to get information from the physical senses wherein the devil can talk to us, 
but we listen and submit ourselves to your word. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. God bless you.